All right, welcome to Hike 360 with a new hike today. I'm alone. Ryan is in Sacramento doing some door dashing before heading down to Joshua Tree for a half marathon trail run. I am at Great Basin National Park, and Great Basin National Park is on the kind of close to the border of Utah in Nevada. So I've driven across what is known as Highway 50 or the loneliest road in the United States. So I really wondered what this national park was about. I'm going to hold the camera a little higher so you guys can get a view. And uh, so national parks are usually created to preserve, you know, a wonder, a couple of wonders of the world and some ecosystems. This one, this one has so many things going for it, especially the ecosystems. Um, so let me explain what the Great Basin is first. Uh, the Great Basin is basically almost the entirety of Utah. It goes all the way from the Sierra Nevadas, so, you know, the Lassen volcano, all the way to, you know, kind of a halfway through Utah. And it is the, the middle portion of this part of the country that uh, the water does not go to an ocean. It stays within the Great Basin. And 11 to 30,000 years ago, where, which is the time period that this area really got its uh, more recent formation, this was all very um, uh, wet, much more, much more than it is now. Uh, they had cyber-toothed tigers, camels, um, uh, big like, you know, pterodactyl, it's not a pterodactyl, but it's a 16 foot wingspan predator bird and all kinds of different things going on here. Um, and obviously the last ice age changed the climate and the Great Basin became pretty arid as it is now. And you can see down here, that is, you know, picture that, what a great picture, um, four or 500 miles the idea or what i found and i had no idea it's such a beautiful drive by these long valleys and then it's a single ridge of mountains followed by a long valley and a single ridge of mountain these valleys are you know anywhere from 20 to 50 miles wide and then you get these mountains that are snow capped and it's just unbelievable so what we have here in this ecosystem of this national park great basin national park starts really at the bottom. So this is the second tallest peak. It's Wheeler Peak, second tallest in Utah. It is 13,000 feet. And I just heard a noise. <laughs> I'll get to why that startled me for a second uh, when I get farther up the mountain to explain the ecosystems. Um, so this is the second tallest peak in Utah at 13,000 feet. Obviously it gets snow covered pretty early uh, and all year round. The snow melt down at the base uh, when you first come in, well, you first come into the park, it's, it's way down there off into the brownish area, a town called Baker. And you come into the edge of the mountain and that's where there's two visitor uh, centers. The second visitor center is at the Lehman Caves. This is a huge cave sequence underneath this mountain. And so the mountain's pretty much limestone, uh, rain falls and captures some carbon dioxide, turns it into carbonate, uh, very light carbonic acid, seeps through the limestone, disintegrates some of the limestone as the water seeps down into this huge cave system where there are stalactites and stalagmites. And that's how those things are formed is the very slow drip of of water that has some limestone in it and the limestone stays behind as it drips down in the caves this is a two day you know one night or two, better yet a two night campground uh or national park you want there's so much to do here it's just it's so hard to believe and it's free um so you want to camp here because the cave tour alone, which you want to make reservations ahead of time, that's 90 minutes. I can't imagine how much you, you, you know, can be seen in 90 minutes of cave tour. Ryan's more the splunker of the family and he really enjoys caves. So we're going to get back here for a lot of reasons, some of which I'm going to cover right now. 
All right, so the snow melts uh, created a cave system. You know, that's obviously flowing water that creates the caves. Uh, and now um, it's much smaller. The ice ages ended, you know, 10,000 years ago. And um, we're left with these big cavities. Uh, the river, the rivers that we have today are home to a type of trout. There's a lot of ecosystems here. There's a lot of specific animal types and plant types that I'm not going to get to, but the more famous ones that they talk about in the movie, highly recommend the movie. There's a trout type that's only here in these rivers around this mountain. Uh, almost went to extinction about 100 years ago, and they've slowly been bringing it back. Um, and so that's fragile species number one, this trout. Uh, as we move a little farther up the mountain, what startled me from the noise standpoint is there is a specific rattlesnake only found here. <laughs> um, I didn't hear the rattlesnake on the way up. By the way, it's, you know, it's Halloween tomorrow, so it's late October. They've closed down, I can't get up farther, they've closed down some of the road. Um, and I had to walk up here, it's about two and a half mile walk from the car and uh, 900 feet. So that's a quick little walk up the road. It's a paved road, even though this lookout is gravel. And I am at the Mather Overlook. All right, what else am I gonna see? Um, up as we get a little higher above the tree line, there are some alpine flowers. There's a specific little alpine flower that blooms uh, and the bloom looks like a little raspberry. So the flowers itself look like a, a little, um, you know, grouping of raspberries. Uh, and that's what that flower does, only found on this mountain. But the most incredible thing is the bristlecone pine trees. There are three different bristlecone groves, one of which is up, uh, up a little higher. These are pine trees that are the oldest living um, earth <laughs> element, uh, you know, not a mushroom uh, or a fungus. It's the oldest living blooming thing on the planet period. Uh, they live up to about 5,000 years old and the groves have trees going back four or five, well, 4,000 years, 4,000 plus years. This is so arid now that when those trees die, their trunks stick around for another couple of thousand years. So you can see dead trees that are like six, 7,000 years old up there. And these are not, this is not the sequoia. Uh, these are not big trees. These are our alpine pines in an arid environment. So they look scraggly. They're small, like, like some of these trees behind me, but still grow to be 5,000 years old. Now, uh, I'm not done yet because this ecosystem uh, th within this national park has uh, a hidden surprise. Up here in the cone is a glacier, an actual live glacier. I don't have the name of the glacier, probably Wheeler Glacier. It is the southernmost glacier in North America. Uh, and you can do a hike if the road were open, we could get up to the Wheeler, what's, what's the last point here, Wheeler Peak. And you can, that's at 9,800, so it's only another 800 feet up. Uh, you can then take a day hike to go up above the tree line. You'll see the bristlecone pines and you get to go to the base of the glacier. Wow, what a crazy cool hike. And I think you can actually go to the peak. Yeah, there is a path that goes to the peak. Um, wow, what a great two for one hike. So Ryan and I are definitely coming back here at some point in our lives to get up to that glacier. Uh, and um, I'm still not done yet because as the tagline for this park explains, half the park is in the dark. Another reason you want to camp here is that this is a designated dark sky area and they have on Saturday nights, they have sky uh, star tours uh, in the campgrounds and it is supposed to be one of the best places to stargaze in the in North America. I mean, it's just, it's dark sky here. So there's a lot to do and I'm really happy to be here. Look at how gorgeous that is. So. I'm glad I'm here with 360 degree camera. I'm going to turn on a little lower to get some more of this great basin view. Um, 
because it just goes on and on and on and on. You know, we can only see probably 50, 60 miles there. And through that opening there, that's where I'm driving next into Utah. And then way, way back, it looks like there's clouds. There's actually white capped mountains over there too. Uh, All right, so this is the other side of the mountain, so to speak. We are up and over this ridge here to look at the peaks, which are gonna come into view behind me. But ahead of me, you can see kind of the vastness that goes on for, well, as I said, 500 plus miles. Uh, there are a couple of farms that are in sight from here. Not the case uh, for most of this. And by this little green spot here to the right, that's the town of Baker where the entrance to the park is.